Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show, episode 74. Happy New Year. 2020 is finally here. This is the year we've been talking about for quite some time from an electrification of the automobile landscape perspective. And it's finally here, so it should be an exciting year. I hope everybody had the best of holidays. Thank you very much for some of your well wishes that I received from the last show through emails and comments. I appreciate it. And welcome to this first show of 2020. Got a few stories I'm covering, so let me get right into it. Now, first story is an update from a U.S. charging network called EVgo. I think a lot of people have heard of those. Well, they've actually added or they're going to add the Tesla charging plugs uh, in their fast chargers across uh, the U.S., um, of course, Tesla has an existing supercharger network with about 15,000 chargers, um, and that includes North America, Europe, and Asia. So EVgo has said that they're going to add the Tesla plugs to them, and uh, it doesn't say how many. They've already actually opened one up in the San Francisco area, uh, and EVgo has about 750 fast charging stations across the U.S. So I'm sure some sort of percentage of those will get Tesla connectors. Um, again, they'll give you 90 miles of charge in about 30 minutes uh, at a, a one uh, at a flat per minute rate with no additional fees for that. So good to see that Tesla owners will have another option when they're out and about. Now, staying with charging news here in Canada, I think I mentioned it on a couple of shows ago, but the official announcement came out over the holidays of Petro Canada finally uh, putting in their last of their nationwide charging network. This is the first of its kind, uh, even actually surpasses the supercharger network as far as connectivity goes from coast to coast. It's the first, as I mentioned, uh, part of the uh, monies that Petro Canada received through the Government of Canada's Electric Vehicle and Alternative Fuel Infrastructure Deployment Initiative. They got 4.6 million bucks to help them uh, deploy this uh, charging network. And it was completed on December 17th of last month. And it goes from Victoria, B.C. to Stewiaki, Nova Scotia, from coast to coast. It's got more than 50 sites that have the dual head, both Chatamo and CCS combo plugs rated at up to 200 kilowatts for now, when they will have an option to upgrade those to 350 kilowatt when required. Um, so it's really nice to see that there's 50 sites now across Canada. My understanding from Petro Canada is that these sites are going to be about every 250 kilometers or so. I haven't really looked at the map, but that, that's my understanding. And some of these are in big cities and some of these are in small towns, but definitely it'll be a linkage that you can drive from coast to coast in an EV. So well done, Petro Canada. Now getting into some automotive news, a quick, quick update excuse me, about Sono Motors. I mentioned on the last show that they were doing their um, 50 million euro for December fundraising or crowdfunding to keep them going. Well, they did not achieve that at the end of December. They uh, received just under 33 million euros of pledges for the campaign in 30 days. So what they did is they, they took a couple of days. They went out to the Sono uh, reservation pool, the, the community of everybody that's got a reservation in for one of the Scions, and they asked them if they thought it was a good idea if they could extend the crowdfunding for another couple of weeks and overwhelming response said yes over 94 percent said yes so they are extending it um, to january the 20th of this month and hopefully they can receive their 50 million euros within that time uh, so i'll continue to watch and i'll continue to report on that progress when the time comes and we'll see what happens but good luck to sono motors Quick update for Tesla. Their numbers just came in today as I was about to stand and record this show. And they, of course, exceeded analyst expectations and their own calls by delivering over 112,000 um, EVs for the fourth quarter. Most of those, of course, being uh, Model 3s at just over 92,000. Um, that's an excellent number. Um, this is just probably their, I believe it's their best quarter on record for global deliveries. Well done, Tesla. Um, so we'll have to continue to watch them, especially with uh, the Model Y coming out later this year and as they continue to ramp up in China. But uh, congratulations, Tesla, on an excellent quarter, and I'm glad that you continue to grow. I want to move over to India, and there's a country that is trying to electrify slowly but surely. It's tough for that marketplace. Such a vast country with a lot of rural elements to it and uh, unstable electrical grid in many, many parts. But certainly within the big cities, they have their share of congestion and traffic issues, no doubt. And of course, two-wheeler and three-wheeler electrification has been very big. But 
uh, so has cars and Tata, uh, India's um, uh, automotive manufacturer, has announced their first electric, all-electric SUV. It's called the Nexon, and it's just for their domestic market in India, and they predict that it'll have a range of over 300 kilometers, and you can actually start pre-ordering that now if you're in country. The market, the official market launch for this vehicle is, is scheduled for later on this month or into early February. Um, final prices aren't fixed, but they are expected to be around the 17,700 euro mark uh, or to 21,000 euros, and you can convert that to the local currency. Um, again, 300 kilometer range, a 245 newton meter torque uh, single motor, um, drawing from about a th just under a 30, just over a 30 kilowatt hour uh, lithium ion battery pack uh, to give 129 horsepower um, for that rating. Um, uh, the company has actually been setting up a charging infrastructure across the nation over the last year or so to help support this. But again, good to see uh, innovation coming from the Indian marketplace and good to see that they're coming out with their first all-electric vehicle in country. And I'm sure it will be received very well. And I love, you know, when countries like India and others develop their own electric vehicles and Turkey is not to be left behind. Um, I'm good, good, definitely going to butcher this, but the uh, Turkey and in automobile uh, Grissium Gurubu, uh, or T-O-G-G, -G, TOG for short, has established to make uh, Turkey's uh, the first global mobility brand by um, unveiling an early stage prototype of their all-electric C slash SUV or compact SUV, a vehicle that they have. Um, it's going to actually launch in 2022 officially, um, but it's going to be their first um, non-conventional um, uh, vehicle in all electric, of course, form. Uh, it's being developed on a brand new platform that TOG has uh, invented. So it's nice to see that they're doing a ground up approach from development, not just taking an existing platform and electrifying it. So you'll get some benefits by doing a ground up design and all their intellectual property is all themselves. At least that's what they claim. There's going to be two different range packages for this vehicle. Uh, there's going to be uh, two battery packs, either somewhere around 300 plus kilometer range or 500 plus kilometer ranges. They don't say the battery pack sizes. They do say that they will be liquid thermal cooled or managed with eight years of warranty which is kind of typical now. They'll have both a single motor and a dual motor for a single rear-wheel drive and all-wheel drive versions uh, with about 200 horsepower for the single and 400 horsepower for the all-wheel drive version. A 0 to 60, uh, 0 to 100 in about 7.6 seconds um, on the rear-wheel drive and 4.8 for people who like that in the all-wheel drive uh, section. Um, and, of course, it'll be connected, have all the smart features, have a lot of um, autonomy uh, features as well. Uh, you know, level two, maybe into level three is what they're claiming. And also, of course, they will be offering over the air updates for this vehicle. So they continually uh, be able to change it. Now, so nice to see that uh, Turkey has now developed their own all electric vehicle as well. And they'll be bringing this to market in the near future. So stay tuned for more info. A quick milestone about VW that they set last month. They delivered their 250,000th plug-in vehicle plug-in electric car. So of course that includes both a plug-in hybrid and all electric vehicle combinations of 215 since 2013, since they started selling them. Um, already this year, they've, they've sold more than 70,000 plug-ins uh, compared to 50,000 of last year. So they're definitely seeing that momentum to carry them into the ID landscape that they're coming out with. Top markets for VW for last year were China, Norway, Germany, the USA, and the United Kingdom. So that's where pretty well most of their e-vehicles were delivered. So congratulations, Volkswagen. Glad to see that you've hit those milestones. And uh, I know that you're pressing for more uh, through the ID platforms in the coming years, and I can't wait to see them. And finally, just a quick recap of vehicles that we're anticipating to come out for this year in the electric landscape. They're Hopefully will be more than this, but certainly the top ones are going to be obviously the Tesla Model Y. Everybody's going to be really, really excited about that when it comes out. Um, we've got the ID3, of course, that's already hit European shores and will continue to hit more markets within the uh, Europe and Asia pack. Rivian and their R1T truck is expected to come out this year, and I'm excited about that. Uh, of course, BMW's iX3 is due to come out this year as well. It's their all-electrified version of their X3. The Byton M-Byte, of course 
Taurus is supposed to come out this year at some point, the Mercedes EQC. And even though they're having some issues and challenges with supply chain, I'm confident that they'll be able to get the vehicle out into customers' hands this calendar year. Polestar, of course, with the uh, or Volvo or whatever company you want to call them. With the Polestar 2, uh, which will definitely be coming out in the spring, and you saw uh, when I interviewed them when they came to Toronto a couple of months ago. Really excited and stoked about the Volvo XC40. I think that's going to do really well. It's a beautiful vehicle. I've seen a lot of the XC40 fuel type vehicles around, and they're just they're really, really nice. Um, the Ford Mustang uh, EMOC uh, should be coming out sometime. Um, I'm not sure if they'll actually be doing deliveries this year, but we'll have to keep an eye on that. And of course, the ID Cross. Uh, that's now that's not expected for North American markets for another year or so, but we should see uh, more development into that and more of these things showing up at car shows so that they can start to ramp up the pre-orders. And of course, the next version of the e-tron, which will be the smaller version, should be coming out uh, this year at some point, or at least announced. And then if you've got money to spend, there's also Austin Martin's Rapid E and the Fisker E-Motion are all vehicles which are out there as well. So just a few of the vehicles that we expect to be gracing our shores in various fashions for the 2020 calendar year. And I'm excited about this year. I think it's going to be a really cool year from an electrification uh, standpoint of the automotive landscape. And uh, we'll have to continue to watch and see what happens. All right, folks, and that's it for this episode of the EV Revolution Show. Uh, a little bit quicker show, as I did a lot of talking in the last show. I just want to thank everybody for taking the time to watch, to uh, like, subscribe, comment on YouTube. Very much appreciate all the comments and the feedback. Uh, it's been really, really, uh, I've got a great, great viewing audience. I appreciate you all uh, for taking the time that you guys do and uh, letting me know your thoughts and things to look forward to. So I appreciate that. Um, again, always blessed and thank you for my Patreon supporters. I'm very, very humbled by that. Um, I do want to let you know that I did uh, sell those items on eBay that I was putting up for the charity auction. Unfortunately, I didn't get what I wanted to get for those. So I basically didn't really make any money at all. I broke even on those uh, with the shipping and everything. Um, you know, I congratulate the guys that won them. I appreciate you bidding, but um, I, I think in the spirit of charity, people didn't really want to bid higher than the minimum bid and run it up a bit. So uh, a couple of folks got some good deals on those cargo mats, or sorry, on the floor mats. Um, so what I did is I just uh, put a donation myself to the Sick Kids Foundation on behalf of the show. Don't forget, Fully Charged Live coming up February 1st and 2nd. It's less than a month now away. Um, I'll be there. Tickets are still on sale. I talked to the folks actually today in London. Uh, we kind of chat every couple of weeks about the show and they say tickets are selling really good well and they're very excited about the show. If you're interested, use my coupon code here to get your fully charged live tickets. And I know some folks are going down. Please see me. I'll be there for a couple of days. You get 15% off, by the way, using the code off the tickets. I'll be do uh, helping on a panel on how to choose electric vehicles on Saturday as well. So I'll definitely be out and about. And I look forward to meeting a lot of people and hearing their EV stories. That My contact information is coming up at the end of the show, so please reach out to me there. Uh, please, if you're not subscribing, I would ask you to. It would help uh, me go a long way. Um, it seems like only about 30% of the people that watch the show, uh, the viewership, is our subscribers. And I know sometimes those uh, pop-up things can be annoying, but uh, subscribing is an important metric here on YouTube, and it would really, really mean a lot to me if you would push that subscribe button and maintain your subscription. Um, that would mean a lot if you feel like it. And again, thank you everybody for support. Uh, and until the next show, I'll see everybody when I see you. But everybody, please take care. And we'll go from there. Take care. Bye-bye.